Shalom, we praise you, see our Barsham, Yahweh Shai, Barsham, Hara, Karkadash. Double honors unto the apostles and elders of great millstone who rule well. And Shalom to the hopeful elect. Um, this video is going to be entitled Reincarnation for Dummies. Okay. And um, I've got a few precepts I want to get into. And I'm just going to go in the spirit and Lord willing, you be edified by this video. So this is 2nd Ezra 14 and 34 and verse 35, where, where the point is in, right? Therefore, if so be that you will subdue your own understanding and reform your hearts, ye shall be kept alive and after death ye shall obtain mercy, okay? That mercy ultimately is in a judgment because this is where reason to say, for after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. And then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. Now, this shows you reincarnation very, you know, for, for, forwardly. I'm going to read it again. I'm going to break it down by point by point um, for, for edification. So this is 2nd Ezra 14, 35. For after death shall the judgment come. So... It tells you in the word in Hebrews 9.27, it's pointed unto men once to die, then after the judgment. So you have one one life to live within the body that you're born in, all right? Then after that body, whatever you, you sold in this body, when it when you stand before the Lord, Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, Harakar um, Kadash, you'll basically have a judgment read out to you, Okay. Because, um, you know, as it, in the book of Ecclesiastes, it plainly says, Ecclesiastes 12 and 7, that the dust will return unto the earth and the spirit return unto Yahweh, who gave it, all right? Because the Most High is the one that gave you your spirit, all right? And he's the father of spirits. So, you know, as it, it tells you, dealing with the, 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 um, the um, procedure of death, you know, before it was made for men to live a thousand years, but after a process of time went down to like 120 during during the time of Noah. But then ultimately in Psalms it spoke of that 70 years was the life of man. But then it says you can get 10 years more, but with, with hard labor, man. Okay. So anyway, for after death shall the judgment come when we shall live again. All right. So, what's going to happen after we die we shall live again because we're given a judgment and then we go into the heavens and it tells you that in the book of Job that basically you know there the servant is free from his master that like everyone's at peace everything's at peace you you stay there and you wait for your a lot of time until you come back to play out that judgment that the most I spoke of and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. And why is that? Because a p one key point that's mentioned in the book of John, John the ninth chapter, is when the disciples, you know, John 9 and 2, when the disciples say unto, about the blind man, I believe it was, or a man with some form of um, shortcoming that the Most High gave him from his, you know, in his life, to, for him to deal with in his life, they said, who did sin, um, him or his fathers, or his, you know, his parents? And then Yahweh showing you that reincarnation was common knowledge back in that generation, all right? It's something that's not as well known in its present day, okay? That's part of, you know, the Lord, the Most High, drawing away from us and taking away our heritage, as it tells you in the book of Jeremiah. But anyway, it, it says, that, you know... But Yahweh Shai went on to say, he said, neither, you know, but that this man is, is so, so that the works of the Most High can be done in him, loosely paraphrasing. So basically, that's that was, you know, that shows you that there was a clear understanding of reincarnation and that they understood the, the um, the, what's the word I'm looking for? The way reincarnation works, basically, all right. That basically, if you if you sow some form of wickedness in your lifetime, then basically that come back onto you. 
But if you so some righteousness will come back onto thee. So anyway, next precept. Okay. This is Exodus twenty and five, and it reads, "Thou shalt not bow down thyself to them, nor serve them." All right. Now this is the point. For I, the Lord Yahweh, thy power, am a jealous power. Visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me. All right. Now, the key point is that the most of the Lord Yahweh said that he will visit the iniquity of the fathers unto the third and fourth generation. Okay. Because it tells you in the book of Ezekiel 18 and 20 that the son shall not inherit the in, um, shall not inherit uh, or bear the iniquity of the father neither shall the father bear the iniquity of the son okay and why is that because to the third and fourth generation is is when you are reincarnated you come back in your lot okay and that's why think when you think of, again it's shown by the the the, the verse Isaiah 14 21 prepare slaughter for his for, for his children for the iniquity iniquity of their father all right which is talking about esau but why is it saying that it's saying that because they are their forefathers in reincarnation they are those sons and and, and daughters that are coming back in the third and fourth generation it just so happens that in every third, every generation between them they will commit the same acts of wickedness and that's why it's allotted to them for that 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 judgment the, pre the preparation of slaughter but that's the point okay for the lord for I am the Lord thy power I am a jealous power visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children um, unto the third and fourth generation of them that hate me right because they basically come back in their portion in a lot as is always appointed from, from day one this is the fundamentals of reincarnation it's, it's very straightforward but really and truly the Lord Yahweh Barsham El Shai Ba'asham Harakha Kadash has to be dealing with you. Kadash, should I say? All right. So now this is um, I'm gonna get straight to the point. This is First Corinthians fourteen and thirty two, and it reads, "And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets." Now here's a key thing dealing with the the fundamentals of reincarnation. There is no remembrance of former things. Okay. That's the key point. You now and then even it says there's no remembrance of former things, neither remembrance of things to come. And the reason why that's said is because why? Is is you don't remember what happened in your past life and you don't remember the judgment that was told to you going back to second Ezra fourteen, how the Lord gives you a judgment and then you wait there to come back in your third and fourth generation in your a lot of time your lot and then to live out your life you're not gonna you don't have a, a bearing of of what's gonna happen in a lifetime you just have to live out that life fulfill the judgment and do what you gotta do because man's goings are not man's goings of the lord basically how then can a man understand his own way the lord this is the the most high show as the word theater goes back to the word theos okay which basically you know the world is a stage and the most high is a director the writer he, he works backstage upon everything really he's he's got everything the script he wrote it okay and he's sitting back there and he's got his angels basically working backstage doing every setting up the lighting and all that kind of business to execute the script um to a t basically so I'll read this again. And the spirits of the prophets are subject to the prophets. All right, as I said, there's no remembrance of former things, neither remembrance of things to come. All right, because that's that's how the most I set it up. All right, and that's the key. And then it even tells you in um, Ecclesiastes six and ten that 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 the thing um, is no new thing under the sun. All right. That which has been is that which shall be. And it tells you in the book of Ecclesiastes 6 and 10, that which has been and that which shall be is man. All right. So it's talking about men. And a good, a key example of this is in the book of John 1 and 21. When they inquired, um, 
John the Baptist, as he was known in a lifetime, they said to him, Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. All right? That's what they asked him. Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Why did he? But, but he was Elias. He was Elijah because in the book of uh, Yahweh Shai said it twice and established it on the second um, speaking of, of, upon it in the book of Matthew 11 and also in the book of Matthew uh, is it 13 I believe where he basically said look this is the last that was for to come alright and I tell you that Elias has already come and they um, they did whatever they listed for him and this is basically said it was John okay so John Yahweh Shai understood that John was Yahweh um, was Elijah, the fulfillment of, you know, the prophecies of Elijah's coming first. And that's why even people inquired and saying about why did they say that Elijah first has come to respond things onto the people, onto the, the children, onto Israel. But Yahweh Shai was the one who knew. But John himself, he didn't even know that he was, he was Elijah. Okay. That's why he answered in a way. Was that he was going off big time because he went <laughs> Not big time in a sense, like he's wicked. He just didn't know. He that's not an answer that he had. To, that's not a question that he had an answer to, because it it was in 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 tune with Ecclesiastes the first chapter. All right, there's no remembrance of 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 things to come. All right, so that's a real basic understanding, the overview of reincarnation. I pray you're edified. Shalom.